G'day! In today's video, I'm opening up an Acer Predator G3710. To begin with, to be able to get in here, we're going to have to undo two screws on the back, which are located one here and one down here. Once you've undone those, they'll look like these. And from there, we should be able to slide the back panel backwards, away from the front of the computer, lift it up slightly, and we should be in there. Let me get in there. What do we see? We see one 500 watt power supply located here, or well, 500 watt maximum. So with that, we're fairly limited in what we can actually upgrade the graphics card to. Also, we see over here one SATA hard drive, which would be replaceable. And from there, we should be able to release a tab down here. And hopefully, a bit of luck. No, slide that forward. No. We'll have to take out the drive tray to get to it. But I'm going to ignore that one just for the minute. But to get in there for the puns playing at home, undo this screw, this screw with the cables pulled out, and you should be able to take that drive tray out to upgrade it. But I want to focus on a much faster way of storage. Put that in there. If we have a look down the bottom here, once I tilt you guys up a bit. Here we go. Whoop, a little bit more. There you guys go. If we lift this up, undo a screw down here, fold this out, and then push a release tab down the bottom here, this white little one down the bottom. Pull that to the back. And then pull the graphics card up. It should release. While I'm taking this out, as I'm on my way to the NVMe slot, which is located here, which is where I'm going to be putting a new SSD in, let's talk about the graphics card that's in there. So this one comes with, if I can turn it around, a Radian RX, 4, oh, RX 480 4 gig model. This one is a stock blower variety, which has got a bit of age now to it. The 4 gig model is fairly obsolete. If you're upgrading the graphics card, what are you going to upgrade to? Currently, my money would be on, well, value for money, would be the RX 6600 uh, 6, XT, which uses just under 500 watts of power, or requires a 500 watt power supply or less, 450 to 500 watts, requires a single 8 pin connector, which looking at this factory power supply we've got here, this will do that just fine. Now, as I said, value for money, that's where I'd be looking for. I'd be looking at a RX 6700, oh, RX 6600 XT, a second hand one, potentially X mining, pick them up for about $300 Australian. And that's gonna be a massive improvement over the 480 that was in here. And it's gonna be under the power requirement. Alternatively, for something that's a bit, if you're a NVIDIA fan, sadly, as much as I don't like to recommend it, I would probably steer you towards and probably a RTX 4060 or 47, uh, 4060 Ti. They do recommend 550 watts from the power supply, but they do consume considerably less than that. So I reckon with that, you may still fall under the require, oh, even though it's not quite within that, the, the wanted requirements, the rest of the power draw from this system is relatively low. So I would go an RX 6600 XT or a NVIDIA 4060 slash 4060 Ti for this particular model. But what I'm really here for is down here. Granted, not in, this video, not in the video, but this particular machine is getting an, R, an R, RX 6600 XT in it. It's also getting its RAM bumped to 16 gig, as we can see down here. But I'm gonna be installing this, a one terabyte NVMe SSD. This one's only a Gen 3 one. These are relatively budget ones, but it's gonna be a massive improvement over the performance of the SATA hard drive that's already in here. What I'm going to have to do is put it in on a 45 degree angle, pull down, 
as you note, there's a little notch here. And then I'm going to need to find a small M or MVME screw. I can't remember the particular unit of measurement of sizing that it is. Get that pushed in. I'm going to screw it down to there. I found one of the screws which are extremely tiny, which look like that. Right, line that up down here. Bit of luck, that should thread in. There we go. That's slotted in just fine. So I'm going to be reinstalling Windows 7 on here, uh, Windows 10 on here. This particular one doesn't natively support Windows 11, which requires a 8th gen Intel processor. This only has a 7th gen, an i7-7700. And with that as well, with that being supported, it can't be upgraded to anything higher than that. So you can't change it to an 8th series, 9th, 10th. Your processor is stuck in the whatever thousand range that it's in. Now what I'm doing now is open, taking this off, the CPU cooler, and I'm gonna give it a thermal paste replace. Being that this machine now is probably about six, seven years old, some fresh thermal paste on the processor will definitely help. I've already given it a quick blast with an air compressor to clean it out inside, but if we focus on down here, I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and some tissue paper just to clean that up. So if I drop some on here, drop some on the cooler, that should wipe up pretty well. So being this one's an i7, there's really not much, that, not much higher than it that's worth purchasing to replace. Go over here too, the cooler. You could potentially de-lid the CPU as well. I'm not going to that level of extremes right now. So I'm happy with just a simple thermal paste replace. Hopefully I've got enough Silverstone thermal paste here. I'm gonna squeeze. I think I'm gonna be a bit shy of what's required. See if I can spread that around. The SSD plastic will do perfectly fine. Uh, maybe not. Do it okay. You can put it on more thick and chunky, but that will do for now. It's gonna be ample. I'll hook the fan back up down here, sit it back on top. And that will go for now. Now if I screw it down lightly on each corner and then cross pattern from there. Granted it doesn't usually matter too much. One's tight, it's tight. Now on this one you can't replace the CPU cooler with an aftermarket one, just due to the design and how it threads in. So this one's pretty much stuck with what it's got. Replacing the thermal paste is the next best thing. Have okay, a look over here, we have the RAM. Now it does have two sticks of eight already. So you'd want about Preferably if you can get 16 gig of RAM, that's what you want. This one is PC for 2400 megahertz. There's no point buying RAM for this one faster than 2666. The i7 will simply not utilize the RAM. So you could buy 3200 megahertz, 3600. It's not gonna really run any faster than the bone stock stuff that's here. So save your money, buy the cheapest RAM possible. See if you can get a large amount of RAM. So 16 gig or 32 gig. Get four eights, fill the whole thing up. To install the RAM, we've got to spread out these little clips here, like that. And then there's a little notch here that lines up with the notch down here. 
or at least there. So if I line it up and put it in the other black slot so it runs in dual channel mode, line it up there, sit it down, I should be able to push it down. If I have it around the right way. Flip that around, make sure you line up the notch like I just did, and then push down. It should click, these bits should go up and surround it, like so. Give them a little wiggle to stay in either in position. The power supply could potentially be upgraded as it is using a standard ATX form factor. So the four pin going over here, uh, yeah, the four pin going over here and the 24 pin over here, that is all perfectly fine. You potentially upgrade the Wi-Fi card. It's located down here near the processor. Um, you could do that if you'd like. So we've covered processor, we've covered RAM, we've covered NVMe, we've covered 3.5 inch storage, we've covered graphics card and power supply. So that about covers everything to do with this particular machine. I would recommend going for a double or twin slot graphics card as opposed to a triple fan graphics card. Uh, triple, double fan, not triple fan. As a triple fan, I think there'll be definitely some issues getting it into position. Then this is a single blower style card and we're already struggling for space down here. Next up, I want to put a Phillips head screw back in there to hold the graphics card into position. And then this little thing lots, pushes down and I don't know if it's meant to hold the graphics card into place or what it's meant its purpose is, but the side panel pushes against there and kind of locks it into position. So from here, I'll be doing a fresh reinstall of Windows, Windows 10 as mentioned, and yeah, seeing how this goes. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your Acer Predator, and I'll catch you guys later. I'm gonna get this side panel on. Bye.